Hey guys, it's Abby here. I get asked a lot of questions about this all the time, so I thought it would be easier just to make a video for you. I get asked all the time what type of foods that I eat and not eat to help my eczema get better. As you know, if you've read my blog or if you know my story about how I overcame severe eczema for over a decade, you'll probably know that diet made a huge difference, as well as supplements, but I'm just gonna touch on diet today. The diet that I did was the elimination diet. It is a super strict diet and it definitely helps calm the inflammation in the body. So I just want to speak to this today and share with you what I did and what I didn't do to help my eczema get better. So here's a short elimination diet 101 and what it is and what it involves. So basically there's two phases to the elimination diet. First phase is to remove potential allergenic foods. So we want to remove anything that could be potentially allergenic, which I will go into later in this video. And basically we remove these foods for a period of a couple of weeks. Usually some people say two to four weeks. I personally recommend four to six weeks. The reason being is that our skin cycle takes approximately four weeks to renew itself. So if you do the elimination diet for approximately six weeks, that makes it safe for your body and skin cells to begin to renew itself. I personally did this for about two months or more until the flare-ups were gone. And then comes phase two. You'll want to reintroduce those foods that you've eliminated. You'll want to add a new food group every three days since uh, food allergies and sensitivities can take uh, about 24 to 48 hours to show up. So three days is just to be safe. So for example, on the first day, you might Try to add a small amount of dairy and just notice if you see any symptoms. If not, three days later after that, move on to the next food. The next food could be wheat. We generally want to avoid anything packaged, so anything in a bag or a box as they're usually really processed especially chips and in this case which is also deep fried unless it's something like quinoa or brown rice which usually comes in a package those are more natural so it's usually fine we also want to avoid gluten so any wheat barley or rye which also counts it um, makes it harder for the digestive system to work since gluten is basically glue and sticks things together there's also peanut butter, which is very allergenic for a lot of people, so we want to avoid those. Red wine or any type of alcohol can really slow the liver and hinder it from doing its function, so we want to remove alcohol during this time. Caffeine is the same thing, plus it's very, it, it's very stimulating and it can increase anxiety as well as stimulate the adrenal glands to work very, very hard, which can overwork itself. Dairy is something we want to avoid as it can be very allergenic, so anything like yogurt or ice cream and cheese is to be avoided. Any sugary foods is definitely on the no-no list. Um, it might look really hard at first because sugar is something we consume a lot, but trust me, your palate will begin to change and your cravings will die down as you do this diet. The other thing is uh, tomatoes, which are part of the nightshade family. These can be very irritating for some people with eczema. So other nightshade family foods include eggplants, paprika, hot peppers, and potatoes. Also, I have corn here, but soy is also on the list. We should avoid any pork, which I have here, sausages, or even beef. These are red meat and can be inflammatory. And we have eggs here as well, which a lot of people can be very allergenic to, so we just want to remove it during this time. So here's the list of foods, and for a complete full list, please check my link below.
So here are the foods that are really, really good for your skin and will help nourish the inside of your body so that it will begin to heal. Over here we have vegetables of different colors. Make sure to eat a variety of vegetables, six to nine servings a day so that it will heal and nourish the inside of your body and your skin. Here we have onions and garlic. Make sure to consume a lot of these. They will help kill the bad bacteria in your gut. Plus, they will also they also contain a lot of sulfur, which will heal your skin. So those are really nourishing. Here's ginger, very very good for your skin and digestive system, and it's anti-inflammatory as well. And of course, the fruits. It's good to eat a lot of these, but stick to one to two servings a day and not too much because sugar will really affect eczema, and fruit is still sugar. Over here we have fermented foods. They'll help kill the bad bacteria in your gut, so they're really good for you. There's sauerkraut, but there's different kinds as well, like kimchi. Over here we have good oil, so flax oil, olive oil. Here we have good sweeteners like stevia, which won't raise your blood sugar and are all natural. We have good nuts like cashews. Peanuts are not allowed though because they're very inflammatory and potentially allergenic. Over here we have chicken. So stick to organic as much as possible for all of these foods. If not, then free range chicken. Even salmon is allowed, but only wild salmon and not farmed salmon as uh, there's more antibiotics in those. You can have spices like turmeric. Very, very healing for your skin. Turmeric's involved in over 100 different pathways to reduce inflammation. I took this a lot and it definitely reduced flare-ups. Good seeds are also allowed like flax seeds, which contain a lot of fiber to help you eliminate toxins, as well as herbal teas like chamomile. So make sure to have a good variety of these all-natural, unprocessed foods, which will help nourish your body from the inside out.